Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Adobe XD Masterclass. My name is Howard Pinsky, Senior XD Evangelist here at Adobe, and I hope you're all doing well on this Friday morning or afternoon, depending on where you are. If you are tuning in live here on Behance, let me know who you are and where you're tuning in from. We've got Philip from Germany, One Sock Wonder, who's been MIA for a while. Welcome back. Uh, Nasser and N and Wade and Kristen and Sergio. Great to see everyone here. Abdukar, great to see you as well. Hope you're all staying safe. Hope you're all having a great week and getting ready for the weekend to come. All right, so another week, another masterclass. We were off last week, taking a, a day off to recharge, focus on our mental health. It was a great day. Where is Adobe Max? Adobe Max is coming. Actually, let me hop over to my screen. And Adobe Max will be here October 20th to the 22nd. It's just around the corner. If you haven't registered yet, head on over to max.adobe.com completely free this year, which is fantastic. We're going to have a ton of sessions. I think there's over 350 sessions. We've got some amazing speakers. I'm going to be hosting a few of those breakout sessions covering Adobe XD, getting started, advanced tips and tricks. Of course, we've got some new features that we're working on that uh, I've been already planning my videos for, so it's going to be really exciting stuff. Umicorn, good morning. Yu Ling Tan, welcome. Ariana and Christina and Russian XD. Jay Swanson, great to see everyone today. All right, Mr. Pinsky is a bit pinky today. I'm a, oh, I am a little bit pink, aren't I? That's interesting. Weird lighting. All right, so what do we have planned for today? Well, I figured, you know what? It's the morning. I'm taking Paul's slot. He's in some fancy Adobe Max meetings this morning, so I'm switching with him again. He'll be here with his Photoshop masterclass a little bit later today. So it's the morning, at least for me, right? Uh, is Adobe Max in San Francisco? So Adobe Max is here is completely remote. We're going to be hosting from all over the place. It's going to be online only. It's going to be completely free. It's going to be a good time. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world. You'll also be able to watch many of the sessions afterwards. So if you miss them live, you'll be able to re-watch them. And there you go, Wade. Thank you posted some information in the chat. All right, so we today are going to be creating a lovely, delicious coffee looking application. And it's just fitting, right? It's the morning, at least where I am. Many of you, it might be the morning as well. And I figured, you know what? Let's create some coffee. Why not, right? So we're gonna hop into Adobe XD and we are gonna create something that looks like this. It may change a little bit and I would love your suggestions as I'm going through this hour long masterclass on what could change, what could be different. And if you have questions about Adobe XD, only the current version of Adobe XD, not the future versions. Those I'll be able to talk about at Adobe Max, but throw your questions in there. I will be doing my best to take a peek over there and answer them. All right, hopping over to Adobe XD, here we are. Here's the splash screen where you can get started immediately with various devices. We've got iPhone devices, phone devices, web stories for uh, social media, which is great. Or if you want to start with a custom size, you can do that over here to the right. But let's go ahead and we're going to start with a phone dev de device. That's the word. And we'll do an iPhone 10R, 10S Max, 11. A lot of numbers and letters in there, but the big one, right? The big recent iPhone. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose that. XD is gonna to spring to life with my first artboard and we are going to get designing. So on this design, there are a few things that I might want. And Tia saying, coffee, my happy place. I completely agree. I've got my coffee over here. I've also got water if I get dehydrated. Life is good, right? All right, so we've got our first artboard and there are a few things we might want on this particular design. The, the first thing is maybe we want at the top a nice image to really kick off what this particular screen is. And in this case, if you missed the preview, let me hop back over here. We're focusing all on the pumpkin spice latte, at least to start. So that's the particular design that or the coffee that we want to focus on. So I'm going to grab my good old rectangle tool and simply draw one out across my artboard eh, to about right about there, right? And I'll just change the color of this particular shape just so you can see it against the white background. And what I want to do now is grab an image to pop in here because nothing brings an artboard and a design to life better than an image. So hopping over to Finder, 
Boop, there we go. I've got some great images. <laughs> Josh says, I need 12 more coffees. Only 12? I think you need a lot more than that. I'm on number one, but right after this, I'm probably gonna go over number two. So I've got some great looking coffee images that I grabbed from Adobe Stock and let's see. So this one here looks pretty good. I mean, it's a great looking cappuccino or latte with a pumpkin. It's got a very fallish vibe, right? Yeah, Adam, the good old rectangle tool. So I'm gonna grab this image, drag it directly into Adobe XD right on top of any shape. And if you're new to XD, any shape can be used as a mask. So if you draw out a rectangle, if you draw out an ellipse, or if you're using a path tool, you can use that as a mask. Now, I really wanna focus in on this coffee. So I'm gonna double click into this particular mask and drag this on up so we can really start to see this coffee come to life in front of us. All right, that looks pretty good. Now. Down below, we of course need additional information. We need some sort of a container to house much of the information that we're gonna be displaying to users. We need some buttons, we need text to let us know that this is the magical pumpkin spice latte. I may also wanna change the background of this particular artboard. So I have the artboard selected, which I'm actually gonna go ahead and double click and rename to pumpkin spice. And for the background, you know, we could go, we could go dark, completely dark. We could go a little bit grayish, but maybe just to introduce a little bit of color, I'm gonna switch over to like the blue areas and just bring in a touch of color. We don't wanna go too crazy, because if we do something like this, it's gonna be very difficult to work with the content on this area. But I'm gonna just bring in a little bit of color. So there's, you know, a little bit of gray, a little bit of black, and a little bit of blue in there. That looks pretty good. And we can, of course, tweak this as we go on in this masterclass. All right, now what we wanna do is maybe to give this application a little bit of style. We may want a container on top of this with rounded corners. So I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool one more time, drag one out like this. I'm gonna overlap it a little bit. And you're gonna see why I'm overlapping this in a second. And someone's saying, let's see, uh, Abdukar, how can I send my health globe on Twitter? So if you design anything that I've previously designed in the masterclass, just send it as a, an image in on Twitter at Pinsky and I'll do my best to look at it. I do get a few tweets from time to time. So sometimes they slip through the cracks, but if I missed it, send it again. And uh, if I like it or reply to it, then you know I've seen it. Today I faced some bugs using overflow on design's main screen. Just turn black on preview. Also, da, 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 da. so if you're experiencing any bugs in XD, definitely hit up Adobe Care on Twitter and they'll be able to collect logs, they'll be able to diagnose and troubleshoot and things. It's difficult to do that during these classes, especially if it's a, a bug that I haven't personally experienced. So Adobe Care on Twitter is a good spot to get your bugs diagnosed. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I've got this container and I wanna round out the corners a little bit. So I'm gonna just grab one of these handles on the inside. You can see on the four corners, there's little handles and you can grab any of them. You just vroom, drag them all in and you can also adjust the property within the properties inspector. My zoom isn't working. It might work eventually, but it's over here, down here to the right. You can adjust the values right here. Right now it's set to 32 pixels. Looks like a pretty good value. I'm gonna keep that, but you might be noticing that down here at the bottom, it also rounded out these corners and we may not necessarily want that. So there are two things you can do in that situation. You can either go over here to the properties inspector, click on this second button where it says different radius for each corner and you can adjust the radius here and it essentially goes top left, top right, bottom right and bottom left. Or what you can do if you prefer working on the canvas is you can hold down your alter option key and just drag the individual corners back and you're noticing it's only affecting the corners that I'm dragging because I'm holding down alter option. Someone saying you are really amazing us all of your classes and presently too. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate you all checking out my master classes and hanging out with me every single Friday. So we've got this container looking pretty good, right? But it's there's a lot of contrast going on. And for this particular application, I want a nice dark vibe to it. So I'm going to actually, let's actually go ahead and grab the color of this background that I'm using. I can hop into my assets panel over here and press the plus button beside colors. And I'm simply gonna use that color to apply it. Boop, there we go, to this container, right? 
Can we join in on Zoom? Can you give the link? So Abdukar, this is uh, this is where we, we stream. We stream on Behance and you're here, you're chatting. So this is the only place to join. There's no Zoom link. I'm not hosting it on Zoom. It's all done through YouTube and Behance. And since you're here chatting, this is exactly where you should be. So welcome. All right. So we've got our container. Now, I think to get a little bit fancy, I love getting a little bit fancy with these masterclasses and these designs. I may want to bring in a little bit of the image in the background. And I purposely, if you remember, made sure to overlap this particular shape with this image, right? Someone's asking, is there a way to quickly copy objects without grids? Something like Control D on Illustrator. Is there a way to quickly copy objects without grid? I'm not sure what that means. Clarify that, because in, in XD you can just co uh, command uh, C to copy, and then you can command V to paste, or you can also command D to duplicate an object very easily, just like on Illustrator. So that might be what you're talking about, but clarify if it's not. So I've gone ahead and created this container, and now I want to get a little bit fancy and bring in some of that image in the background. So I'm going to turn on the background blur option within the properties inspector down here at the bottom. And it's going to give me a default blur of 30 for the blur amount, 15 for the brightness, and then we've got zero for the effect opacity. Now I want to make some tweaks because this is a little bit muddy, it's a little bit strange, and whenever you're working with a background blur on an object that's going to house content, you want to make sure that it's either very white or very black, right? And that will allow you to very easily focus on contrast. So in this case, I'm going to drop the brightness to about zero, and all of a sudden, you know, that's looking pretty good. And because we set the background color to this nice grayish blue, um, it looks pretty good. Is there a way to rotate a repeat grid? I don't believe so. Let me double check. Well, I mean, you can move your mouse outside here, right? And you can do that in the properties inspector. Um, I think, hopefully that's what you're talking about. Um, but let me know. So we've got this looking pretty good. We've got a little bit of color coming through. But what you might want to do is we can also increase the effect opa or the the yeah, effect opacity down here at the bottom of the properties inspector. That'll just kind of bring in some of the original color, which in this case is that same grayish blue. So it just dampens it a little bit, but it still allows some of that color from the background image to come on in, which is really nice. It's very elegant, it's not too much. And I'll show you again a little bit later on once you start adding content you know, the trickiness to working with a background blur. If you blur it, if you have a, you know, if it's too like that, and it's going to be difficult to work with. All right. So now that we've got our container looking pretty good, we might want to start adding in some content. And let's start nice and big with the header of this particular screen. And it's going to be pumpkin. So I'm going to grab my text tool shortcut key T and type out pumpkin. Pumpkin. There we go. Second week into learning Adobe and it's pretty amazing. Great, thanks for joining us, Rob, and I'm glad you're enjoying these classes. Uh, someone's from joining from Dallas. Welcome, everyone. All right, so I've got my text, right? But of course, this looks pretty boring. If I just pop this right here, eh, eh, right? So we're gonna make some stylistic changes to this. I'm gonna go, first go ahead and enlarge this text layer. And since this is a point text, I can very easily grab the handle right here at the bottom. Let me zoom in. There's the handle right there. And I'm gonna vroom, drag it on up. And now we've got some large text. But of course, there's still a lot going on. This gray text is a, is a little bit muddy against this dark background. So we wanna really make this pop. So first, I'm gonna change the typeface. And it's set to Helvetica New by default. But let's go ahead and go for Mostra which is a fun typeface I've been using quite a bit recently. And let's try bold. Let's see what that looks like. Do you think that looks good? Maybe, can we push our luck and go for heavy? Ooh, maybe, possibly. We'll see what that looks like. I'm gonna center this, make it a little bit larger. I think heavy could work. You gotta be careful with heavy typefaces. Heavy and black are very difficult to, like that, you gotta put that in the right situation. In this case, it's probably a little bit too thick, so I'm gonna just drop that back to about heavy. That looks pretty good. Now for the color, I may want to bring in more of that fall feeling, right? We've got some nice oranges and browns up here in the image, the pumpkin at the top. You can only see a little bit of it, but it's a nice orange, right? So let's go ahead and experiment with some colors. And let's try 
something like this, where it's sort of like an orange, but a little bit gold, right? Maybe I'll bring this down a touch. And all of a sudden, we're starting to get a little bit of a fall vibe to it. Mohammed from Pakistan, welcome. It must be super late over there in Pakistan. I saw someone earlier from India as well. It must be like almost midnight, right? Probably 10 o'clock at night. So we've got this looking pretty good. Now what I want to make sure to do is save this as a color in my assets panel. And from Russia, great to see all of you. <laughs> Philip says I would have placed bets that you would use Josephine. I almost did. It's it's not bad. I can probably get away with that as well. It's kind of fun, but I kind of like the way that this typeface is looking, this monster typeface. So again, I want to make sure to add this color to my assets panel because I think I'm going to be using this particular gold orange color uh, throughout the application on various screens. And if I need to change it, even if I need to tweak it a little bit, I can very easily do that within the assets panel. Adam saying, I don't have the fonts you have, Howard. Is it because I want Windows? Probably not. So some typefaces are not available on the opposite platform. However, most of the typefaces I used in these master classes all came from Adobe fonts. So if you want to grab some additional typefaces, fonts.adobe.com. Um, if you're on a free plan, there are some typefaces available. If you're on the any of the paid plans, you have thousands of typefaces, including many of the ones that I use in these master classes. So um, yeah, as One Sock Wonder points out, Adobe fonts. So we've got pumpkin looking pretty good. And now down below, we may want to have a little bit of a subheader, which is spice latte, right? Now, there, there are a few stylistic choices we can make for something like this. And I'm thinking just to kind of mix things up a little bit, to get a little bit more fancy, leaving it like this probably isn't going to do. I do want to make it all caps. So in my pro in my properties inspector, I'm going to press the uppercase button. It's a good start, right? But I'm thinking maybe we'll drop the weight quite a bit, maybe to light. And then we'll drop the size quite a bit. Something, I don't know, some maybe about 42. 42 is a great number. And then maybe to add a little bit more of a style, we really want to separate the letters, space those letters out a little bit. Let's see, we have, bum, bum, we have some questions. Really love your stream, not sure if you're familiar with Fiverr deals. I'm not familiar with Fiverr. I've tried to use Fiverr a few times and I got severely scammed by, I don't want to get too much into the whole Fiverr situation, but be careful on Fiverr. There's a lot of people that claim to have a skill in something and they don't actually have that skill. Be careful. But of course, there are a lot of very talented designers who are on Fiverr legitimately. So just do your research, do reverse image searches just to make sure that it's, it's you know, they are who they say they are. Monica saying, I'm one week into learning XD and learning so much through this masterclass. Thank you, Monica. I appreciate it. Also, if you go to um, letsxd.com, there's a ton of videos there, beginner and advanced. And of course, this is masterclass number 30. So you can always go back and watch all 30 of these if you really want to. Let's see, what else do we have? Are there any plans these kind of features are going to come to XD? Which kind of, oh, uh, Ravi is saying da 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 da, call da da da, make a prototype with elements of augmented reality. So, you know, there, we're always exploring a lot of different ways to, you know, better your designing from a lot of different things. I don't want to get too much into detail with what we're working on, but anything that the community is looking for, requesting, especially on user voice, we're exploring. Some things have higher priority than others, but again, don't want to get too much into detail on what we're working on. So just wait and see, but we're definitely listening to the community. So again, back to this, I want to space out these letters just so it fills in this area. And I can always you know, drag out some guides. Yes, I know. I know how to use guides, XD. There we go, bring those in. And the reason those tool tips are showing up is because uh, I recently reinstalled Adobe XD. Oh, it's 43, oh no, 42. Boop. Yeah. I had the max build installed on this computer as of this morning, but I had to uninstall it because I didn't want to spoil anything. There we go. So we've got Spice Latte and I'm just going to, let's say bump up, let's try 200, almost, whoops. That looks pretty good. Let's try 300 and we'll just, or whoop, I keep missing it. There we go. And I'll just space this out. And that looks pretty fancy, right? It gives it a fun, elegant feel, but maybe to separate this a little bit more, 
just so it doesn't blend in too much. I might just want to bump this color up to a nice white with a little bit of like a goldish orange in there, just so it kind of mimics maybe this foam at the top. It's not pure white, has a little bit of yellow in there. Looks pretty good, right? Now, one thing I stress a lot in these masterclasses is I find myself, and many of you, let me know in the chat, many of you probably find yourself designing very much zoomed in. I love designing where I can see individual pixels and really focus on the details, but you kind of lose perspective of what the whole design is looking like. So I stress a lot, zoom out, take a look at how things are looking, or you can press the play button at the top right to launch the desktop preview, just to kind of get an idea of, you know, looks pretty good. I'm kind of liking it, right? Laura said, great choice of typeface. I agree. Uh, Megan, I can't keep track of when this masterclass is. Yeah, so usually the masterclasses are at noon Pacific time every single Friday. This week and last week or the week before, I had to switch with Paul Tranny, who usually does the Photoshop masterclasses during this time. He's in, we're all in meetings all the time for Adobe Max, which is coming up in just about a month. So we had to do some shuffling, but hopefully it'll get back to normal. Make sure to follow me on Twitter. That's where I'm always posting updates on masterclasses, times, tips and tricks, things like that. So do that. All right. So again, looking pretty good. I think I'm liking how this is looking. And is there a key, quick key command to space out letters? I don't believe there is at the moment, but that would be something that I would love to see in Adobe XD at some point. Is that is that something we need to check for con color contrast accessibility? Yeah, George brings up accessibility. I think it's very important to start checking as you're designing, check out accessibilities. And there's a great plugin called uh, Stark. Again, I have to reinstall my plugins because I had to hide a few things this morning. I'm gonna go ahead and install Stark. And essentially what I would do is, let's say this text here and the background, I would select both of those, hold down my shift key, select those, and I can check for contrast. And this one passes, which is great. And you gotta be careful with thin or light text, because as I, if you take a look, if I get smaller, let's go ahead and check contrast again. Oh, that one worked out well, but you can kind of see that it's a little bit difficult to read when it gets smaller, especially with that thin or light weight, right? Let's go ahead and check these. That mostly passes, doesn't pass AAA 7.1, but that's okay, right? All right, so things are looking pretty good. Now, one more thing I might want right below here is maybe a very quick way to increase the quantity of how many of these pumpkin spice lattes you're gonna order, because sometimes you just want seven of them, right? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna grab the rectangle tool one more time and draw out a container right about here. I'll make sure to center this. And in terms of the styling for this particular element, I'm gonna round out the corners completely because we are working with rounded corners in various areas of this application. Also, this text at the top is kind of, it's not completely rounded, but there's some nice curves to it, right? I'm going to turn off the fill and I might want to set the border to this gold color we've been working with. So I'm going to right click it and apply as border. And because I'm choosing to use this specific color that's in my assets panel, again, like I mentioned earlier, and I'll show you this in a little bit, if I decided to make some tweaks to this color, I can very easily just change it from within the assets panel and it'll change everywhere. All right, how many coffees do you drink a day? Usually just two, I try to stick with two, especially with my heart issues and various other health related issues that I have. I try to limit it to two. Sometimes you kinda you push on, gotta push th a third, but there we go. All right, how would the design look later in production and if different names should work? Yeah, that's a very good question, Jorg. Uh, if you go salted caramel, mocha, frappuccino, blended beverage completely agree. And that's where uh, variance and user testing, I, I will, if we have time, do like a, a latte cappuccino or a vanilla cappuccino. And you can basically see, you know, I because I space these letters out, you have some flexibility there. So if you change it to cappuccino or something a little bit longer, you can bring those letters back in. You can make the text a little bit smaller, focus on one word up here. So in your case, maybe it's caramel, for example, or salted. I don't know. We'll see. We'll experiment. All right, so we've got this. Now inside of this, we may want uh, one, the number, right? So boop, the number one. Now, here's where things get a little bit interesting, right? We're using this Mostra typeface, which is a great typeface for things like this header. 
and spice latte, this subheader, right? But for something like a number, it's a little bit tricky. It doesn't look, I mean, it could be an I, it could be an L, could be a one possibly. So in this case, it's okay to just change it up. Let's try Josephine. That looks a little bit better. And I forget who it was. Someone mentioned earlier, I'm surprised I didn't go for Josephine. I think it was Philip possibly. Um, there we go. We got Josephine. I might also squeeze in Poppins. We'll see. So that looks pretty good. I may want to bump this up a little bit because this is a smaller element, smaller type element. So the smaller you get, the harder it is to read those lighter weights. So semi-bold looks okay. I may even try regular. That could work. And I'm going to apply the gold color that we've been using for this one here. All right, that could work. Now over to the right, I'm going to duplicate this over, holding down Alter Option and Shift and dragging it on over. Parag is asking, I was wondering if we can recreate the timeline zoom in interaction function like Adobe Apps, zoom in out responsive on scroll. I wonder if we can recreate the timeline zoom in inter... I'm not exactly sure what that is. Um, maybe clarify or send me a, a tweet with an image just so I can check that out. So we've got a plus on this side and a minus on this side and maybe for this one going to change the color up a little bit. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make sure to select this one and add this color and I can just use that right here. Bam. There we go. So we, now we have this little ticker, this quantity ticker. <laughs> Justin says, whoa, there are three fonts. Let's not get crazy here. I know. So typically, and that's a good point, Justin, typically you want to limit the amount of typefaces you use in a project. One ideal, right? Two pushing it three a eh, little bit right but try if you can to limit it there's no hard rule on this but you know boop and uh ash 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 tush i apologize for mispronouncing your name um is is suggesting to increase the border size and you're probably right the one pixel border was a little bit difficult to see two pixels makes a huge difference all right whoops what did I do? I just closed the entire thing. That was fun. Let's open it up again. Good thing I'm working on a cloud document, right? It saved all of my work. Fancy. All right. So we've got this element looking pretty good. And just to keep everything organized, because everything is not organized right now, I'm going to select these various elements that make up this quantity picker or whatever you want to call it. I have them all selected. I'm going to turn it into a component. You can also put it into a group. But because I may be using this on multiple artboards, I'm just going to turn it into, into a component. I can right click, make component. I can do it from my properties inspector, my assets panel, a lot of different ways you can do it. Fun fact, I designed this fun little animation. I don't know, you, none of you probably care, but it was kind of cool to see this um, animation get popped into Adobe XD. All right, I'm going to call this quantity. Perfect. All right. So that's looking pretty good. Now, right down here, we may also want a little bit of a description of what a pumpkin spice latte is. Hopefully, many of you may know what a pumpkin spice latte is, but some of you may not, right? So I'm going to grab my text tool and drag out an area text right about here. And we're going to probably aim for about two lines, right? Now, that is obviously not what we want for a description or a body text. So we need to make a lot of changes. And this is set to Josephine Sans. We've got, I'm gonna drop the uh, kerning to zero. And the line height's probably okay for now. Let's try 18 pixels. That looks okay. And let's just start typing out a description. Then we can kind of evaluate whether or not this typeface is going to work. So let's see. Celebrate the start of fall. Favorite drink. Enjoy hot or chilled, right? So the line height's great, right? We, we wanted two lines and that's pretty much it, right? So that looks okay. Now we have to ask ourselves, you know, is this typeface too much? If I were to go back to the Mostra typeface, I think it probably would be too much, right? There's there's a lot going on. It's a very stylized typeface. And if you preview this, it's not terrible, honestly, but it might be a little bit much. So the Josephine typeface is not bad, or we can go with the good old Poppins, right? It's a little bit more of a basic typeface. Obviously, we have to reduce the size a little bit. 
Maybe let's go for... Yeah, I think 16 might work. That's not bad. So let me know in the chat what you think. Do you think the Poppins typeface could work? Do you think the Josephine type? I'm not going to touch Monster for this one. So Poppins or Josephine? Put it in the chat. This, again, this one is Poppins. And we've got Josephine is this one. I think this could work though. Especially back to... Uh, was it uh, who was it? Justin's point about using too many typefaces. We may want to stick with Josephine Sans, right? Possibly. So maybe we'll do that. All right. So that is looking okay. Now it's a little bit squishy here, right? So I may want to just drag some of this stuff down, just to add a little bit more space. Yeah, Philip saying a bit crowded. I completely agree. Let's see, Poppins, 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 Poppins. Oh boy, we've got a lot of votes for Poppins. All right, well, I guess we're going with Poppins. The return of Poppins, everyone. Bam. Now, it's a little bit of a larger typeface, so I'm gonna just reduce the size a touch. And that looks pretty good. Now again, to Philip's point, I definitely agree that we need a little bit more space. And that looks pretty good. I think, right? Too many typefaces. Go with Josephine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely uh, a lot of different directions we can take this, right? But we'll stick with this. And the good news is I can just add this character style to my assets panel. And if we did decide or my creative director decides, you know what? We got to stick with one or two typefaces. We can easily make that change in the assets panel and we'll be good to go. All right. Now, speaking of hot or chilled, we may want some sort of uh, a slider or a picker to let us choose hot or chilled, right? So I'm going to grab my rectangle and vroom, draw one out across this artboard and give me a nice amount of room right about here. And I may want to round out the corners a little bit, just a touch. I don't want to go too much. I just want a nice... Let's try is 16 too much. I think 16 might be too much. So let's try eight pixels. I think that look could look pretty good, right? Now, there are a few colors we're gonna be adding to this specific element. The default color, which is the non-selected item, is gonna be a bit of a darker color. And I'm gonna choose the background color and I'm just going to darken that color like this, right? I almost want it to look like it's almost indented inside this application. And to help with that, I also want to add a bit of a shadow. Now, it's not the typical shadow you might think we're going to be adding. I'm actually going to be adding a white shadow with a blur set to zero. And this is all done within the properties inspector down at the bottom. Uh, Praveen is saying, you missed my chat. When can you get scroll animation in prototype? Uh, yeah, I would love scrolling animation in Adobe XD. I do know that Andrew Shorten, our VP on the XD side, posted an update, a blog post. I would definitely recommend you check that out. I tweeted about it as well. He also tweeted about it, A. Shorten on Twitter. Um, he did mention that prototyping is a priority for us. So you're going to see a lot of prototyping features in the coming months, coming years. So stay tuned for that. And something like scroll animation, like Praveen is mentioning, is something that the team is very much aware that users want, they want it too. So stay tuned. All right, so we've got this looking okay. I don't want it super noticeable. So I'm gonna just drop the opacity a little bit. So now we have almost looks, looks like, if I hide my guides, it almost looks like this element is kind of indented inside of this particular application, which is kind of nice, it's very subtle. But of course we want the toggle switch, right? So I'm going to grab, I'm actually just going to duplicate this particular box, Command and Control D, and drag this back, just about snapping to the center, because there are going to be two options, one on the left, one on the right. I don't need a shadow for this particular area, but I do want to change the toggle switch so that it's, you can tell what's on and what's off. So again, I'm going to sample this background, and maybe for this one, I'm going to just bring this color up a little bit. Something like that, right? A little bit of gray, a little bit of blue, and I think that looks pretty nice, right? Now, in terms of the text, this is going to just say hot. And for this one, we can probably go back to probably, let's see, we can tr maybe try Monster again. And we're just going to bold this a touch and make it a little bit larger. Let's try 24. And again, I'm working very zoomed in, so just preview this. 
That looks okay. I think that could potentially work. It might be a little bit too large. So just tweak it around a little bit. And then over here, we're gonna have chilled. Maybe it's a little bit too big. Let's see. All right, and bam. Okay, I think that could work. So someone is asking, sometimes when I resize text, it's stretched to the box both ways, but I wanna make it expand just one way, let's say down. So um, we do have some updates to text coming not too, in the not too distant future, which I think may help with your, your uh, issue. So stay tuned for that. All right. I'm gonna make sure to select all these elements just like this. And I wanna turn all of these into a component as well. So I'm gonna press the plus button inside of my assets panel. And this will be called, let's say hot and chilled. Now, since I'm using components in this particular situation, I can go ahead and create a state, one for hot and one for chilled. So I'm gonna press the plus button beside the default state within the properties inspector. I'm gonna create a new state. Don't have to worry about hover states since this is a mobile app and this will be called chilled. And all I have to do now is just grab this toggle and move it on over. It's gonna snap into place really nicely. And now I have my default state and my chilled state. And if I wanted to, if I wanna get really fancy, I can actually wire this up for prototyping. Adam is asking, are there any plans for Adobe XD to come to the iPad like the Mac and PC version? Uh, no immediate plans, I don't believe, as far as I, I know. It's something that we've heard some designers say they would use, but also when actually talking to many of these designers, they, they don't, most of them, most of them tell us they wouldn't actually sit down for long periods of time and design on an iPad like they would on a computer. Most of their designing is done on the computer. So, you know, we're asking ourselves, is there is there an experience we can deliver to mobile devices that would be a little bit easier to do immediately, but you know, we'll see. Time will tell. All right, so switching over to prototype mode, maybe when chilled is selected, we wanna transition auto animate to chilled, right? And we'll go for in and out in 0.4 seconds. Let's see what that looks like. Whoop. Simple, right? Let's try 0.2 seconds. Whoop. That's a little bit better. We don't want users waiting around for too long. So 0.2 seconds, 0.4 seconds, could probably get away with. But if you do something like 0.8 seconds, it's a little bit too long, right? We want users to be able to click on this or tap on this, get their hot, get their chilled uh, drinks and just move on with their lives, right? So that looks pretty good. And we can go to the chilled state and choose hot and go over to our default state. So now we can go whoop, 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 whoop. Right? Fun times. Perfect. That looks pretty good. So we've got that looking pretty good. And, and someone was asking, how do you wire from prototyping? I think I just got to it. So hopefully that answered your question. Is there any rule for quantity selector? So there's there are no rules for like quantity selector per se. But what I, what I would say is that typically on mobile devices, anywhere between like 30, and it di differs from Android to iOS, also the size of the screen, but you wanna aim for like 42 pixels for a hotspot target. Cause some people have larger hands, some people have smaller hands. So things like this, right? This plus button, it, it's definitely a little bit small. So what I would t t uh, technically do or typically do is grab like a rectangle and create a rectangle that's about, you know, this one's 38, that could pass, maybe about 42 pixels, and just have like an invisible hotspot back there so that anyone, large fingers, small fingers, they can just very easily press on it. Parag is saying, just tweeted regarding my question. Awesome, I will definitely check that out after this class. I've been feeling my watch um, buzz this entire time, so there's probably a lot of tweets coming through. All right. So we've got this looking pretty good. Now, down below, we may also want to be able to give users the ability to choose the various sizes for their drinks, right? There's typically not one size. There's small, there's medium, there's large. And we want to be able to allow users to choose those in a nice visual fashion. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to grab 
our rectangle and create a square. Something like this, maybe we'll even round or elongate it just a little bit. And maybe I'll round out the corners a touch. Let's try eight pixels, we'll see what that looks like. Eight. Now for the, for the non-active state, do you like the Apple Watch Series 6? I do, I love the fact that it comes with uh, the ability to check your blood oxygen level. I was checking mine, I'll actually have my little oximeter here. Uh, when, when I had COVID, I was checking it constantly because your blood oxygen is much lower when you're battling COVID. Um, and mine was like, at one point, I think it hit 89 and 90, which is very dangerous, borderline dangerously low. So the fact that my watch has that now um, gives me a peace of mind that, you know, it's checking from time to time and I'll be okay. So I'm actually going to copy the element back here, this inactive element, and boop paste it on that. What I did, by the way, I just held down command option and then pressed V to paste, or you can right click and then paste appearance. Now let's see what it would, it would look like if I had three of them going across. It's not bad. I might want a little bit more space. So I'm just going to space this out a little bit. We've got one, two, and three. That's not too bad. I think I might want a little bit more space. Let me make these a touch bigger. Right, we've got three of them, select all those, use our alignment and distribution options at the top. And that I think is looking a little bit better. I think that could work. All right, now of course, one of these is going to be the active state. So I could go ahead and you know just change this one or I can duplicate this one and work on the active state here. B both are okay situations. Now it depends if you want to do any animations, right? So if you want animations, if you want like the active state to kind of move over to the other states, you might want to duplicate one. But for this one, I'm simply going to, let's go ahead and kind of pull this color in. Maybe I'm going to add a little bit of a border on this one. And for here, I can actually grab my gold color that we're using, apply that as a border, a very thin border that looks pretty good. Maybe we're gonna get a little bit fancy with this. Maybe we'll do a linear gradient, right? And let's see. So this top color, just drop it just a little bit. And now we've got a little bit of an active state, right? There we go. Let's see, that could work. And maybe just to really let users know that this is the one that's selected, we may want a little bit of a shadow, but not the shadow that we created on these particular elements. We want a shadow to kind of pop this from the background. So I'm gonna drop this to black and just blur this a little bit. I talk a lot about shadows and you wanna make sure your shadows are a little bit subtle. I think that could work. Umicorn saying you caught the virus. Yeah, I did catch it. Um, I caught it back in early July, early to mid-July. Still trying to figure out where I got it from because we're super safe. Um, it was it was a rough few weeks and I'm still dealing with side. I'm on a ton of medication right now to deal with some of those side effects, but hopefully I will recover completely. I'm still going through tests and things like that, but yeah, doing okay. Hanging in there. All right, so we've got these looking okay. I'm not loving this color completely, so I might wanna drop these a little bit, right? We do have the shadow that pops it from the background a touch. How necessary is it to design using an eight pixel, eight point grid system? I mean, it really depends. Uh, talk with your developers. I know a lot of developers love the eight point grids, right? So if they prefer it, it might make sense. If you're just designing for things like master classes or just for dribble or behance it probably won't make a difference those two extra pix pixels but since most of the devices you're going to be designing for are divisible by eight at least the dimensions not all of them but most of them sometimes it makes it easier to align objects but uh yeah glad you're doing better thank you get well soon thank you appreciate that all right so we've got these boxes we have our active state which is going to be our small we've got medium and large but we we definitely need some more information inside of these so one thing we need is we need some text so i'm actually going to just copy and paste this and this could be small pop that here and we've got medium Make sure that's nice and aligned. And we've got large over here to the right, right? Now, 
we of course have these empty boxes. They look very sad. We, so we need some maybe coffee in there, right? So let me hop over to Finder. And inside of this illustrations folder, I do have a bunch of illustrations that I grabbed from Adobe Stock as well. And I can actually just open these directly in Adobe XD. These are uh, il illustrator files. I can just drag one onto XD. My dock is on my other screen. If you're wondering why I'm dragging it all the way over there. But here we go. Here's the illustrator file. It is loading. You can do it uh, for XD. Now, some of these Illustrator files are very in-depth, very large, but we've got this fun little mocha. It's not a latte, but I think it could work. It's kind of interesting looking. So I'm gonna copy that, and I'm simply going to paste it on this artboard and make it nice and small. There we go. And now here's where we can start illustrating that you know, this is small, we've got medium, and we have large as well. So this one's gonna be definitely a little bit smaller. And then we can drag this over here, makes it a little bit larger. This will be the medium. And then for large, we wanna go quite big, right? There we go. So now, if we take a look, we have our three sizes. We have our small, we have our medium, and we have our large. Philip's saying, there's a lot going on on this page. There is, but you know, whenever you're ordering coffee, there, especially like things like Starbucks, there are always so many different options. And on Starbucks's app, I, I take a look at that when I was trying to figure out what to design for this. There are a ton of options. I want to really simplify it, but also make it a little bit visually aesthetically pleasing so that users can very easily just tap on certain things and they'll be able to choose exactly which coffee or hot or chilled or what size, right? So that's looking okay. I'm digging it. But there's of course one big thing that we're missing. We're missing at the bottom, the ability to actually add this to your cart and purchase this coffee. Now we need a little bit more room down here. So we do have some space up at the top. So I'm actually gonna just drag this up a touch. I can adjust this image a little bit, just so we get this coffee completely inside of this area. And I can just start moving some of these elements just to give us a little bit more room. There, whoops. Then make sure to group all of these elements and this will be called sizes. And of course I could also create a component out of this so that when someone taps on medium and large, it all switches over, right? So we have a little bit more room up here or down here, I should probably say. We can probably make some additional tweaks to this, but for now, let's see if we can squeeze in a button. We probably can't, so we probably need some additional room, but let's go ahead and create that button. In the meantime, I'm gonna drag out a rectangle across my artboard, just like that. Sticking with the eight pixel rounded corners, I will go for that. And now the color, in this case, we may want a little, something that stands out a little bit more, right? We've got, we says so many options, exhausted. Yeah, especially, you know, star, again, Starbucks, um, so many options. Sanket is asking, does AI files get converted to SVG while importing? So going back to this file here, everything is maintained. So if I hop into my layers, we've got our groups, we've got all of our paths, all of this is vector. So you can, if you needed to, you can, you know, make this a little bit larger if you wanted to. You can change the color of this particular element, right? All the colors are here you can very easily just change them directly inside of Adobe XD. All right, what is the shortcut to go from asset panel to layers panel? Command Y for layers, command shift Y for the assets panel, and then command shift P for plugins. All right, so we've got our button down here at the bottom. Now, you have to keep in mind that when you're designing for modern day phones that don't have home buttons, there's probably right, right about here, right? There's this home indicator. I'm gonna round at the corners, it's a little, little bit too thick. There's a home indicator right down here at the bottom that you really can't have anything down there. So you wanna make sure that your buttons or any elements, navigation uh, links and that sort of thing are a little bit further up, just so you don't mistakenly like swipe up on that home indicator and go back to your home screen, for example. Maybe I'll round at the corners a little bit more on this one. Let's try 16. 
All right, now going back to, I think it was Philip's point earlier, things are a little bit squishy and we're gonna we're gonna fix that in just a moment. So I'm gonna just move this up a touch just for now. Now this button, going back to what I was talking about, I want something that stands out a little bit more. Once you have all your options selected, you want that button to really be in a user's face because you want them essentially to purchase, right? So let's try, I don't think any of these colors will really work. Like we could go with this gold, it's a little bit muddy. These other colors that we've been using probably, we probably don't want to go for a color like this, right? Because it's a little bit washed out and users may not know that that's the button they need to press. So in this case, let's try a green. It's kind of fallish a little bit. And it's also vibrant enough that users should be able to see it quite nicely, right? So we'll do something like this. We'll see what that looks like. And in terms of the text in the center, let's go ahead and add to bag and maybe because nowhere else on this particular screen we have the price of these coffees we may want to add in a price so this will be 495 coffees these days are just incredibly expensive and we're going to go for a nice white bump this up in size and make sure it's centered there we go right and again going back to philip's point Things are still a little bit squishy. So I'm just gonna, you know, tweak some of these things a little bit. What I could also do is select all of these elements here, group them, and just kind of move, try responsive resize, see how that works. And that does a pretty good job. As I'm resizing this, it's spacing out some of the elements, of course. Now, I could make my life a little bit more easy and group some of these elements, right? That way, those stay together as I'm resizing. And I can make some minor tweaks. Let's say 24 pixels looks pretty good. And now it's a little bit less squishy and we have our button down there at the bottom. We can see, I can even move that button up just a little bit, just like that. All right, that's looking pretty good. We do have about three minutes left. We also have our toggle right here. We could of course wire up the small, medium and large. We could also wire up with a, maybe an animated mask, the quantity picker up here at the top. But I do wanna show you, going back to, I forget who it was, but someone mentioned earlier, what if it's a different coffee, right? And it's a longer name, for example. So let's experiment. So maybe over here, we might have a vanilla latte or a vanilla cappuccino, for example. So going back to Finder, let me just grab another image, pop one in here, boop, there we go. That looks pretty fancy. Makes it a little bit larger. And here we might want to change this to helps if I can spell correctly vanilla, right? And we may want to space this out a touch so that it works. Now, cappuccino, how's this cappuccino? So we can kind of see we're running into some of those problems. And of course, going back to that person's point is depending on, you know, how long this coffee's name is, you may run into space, you may have to compromise a little bit. But because we're spacing out the characters quite a bit, we can very easily just bring this back a touch and we should be pretty good to go. Let's see, any other questions before we wrap things up? No. All right, so for this one, maybe because it's not so much like pumpkin-ish, we make we could probably just change this Maybe we can go for like this, this color over here, right? Maybe this can be changed to white, just to kind of mix things up a little bit. Do you like iOS 14 widgets? I do, I've been having a lot of fun with widgets. Can you refresh the boop? Boop, there we go. And of course I would probably change this one as well. Something like that, just to kind of mix things up from the pumpkin spice latte and the vanilla cappuccino, right? So that's looking pretty good. We have our pumpkin spice latte looking delicious. We can toggle these. And going back to what I was talking about very earlier on is if you needed to change the gold color or tweak it a little bit using your assets, you have a color in here, you press edit, you can change it to whatever color you want. And you're noticing it's changing across 
all instances of that particular color. So the header, the border around some of these various elements, it's making your life that much easier. So that is just about going to wrap it up. I'm gonna continue working on this particular design. Maybe I might use it in a video or two later on. Expand the screens, I'll probably upload it to uh, Dribble and uh, Behance at some point. But a big thank you to everyone joining me today. We've got Arnab and Raymond, Raymondas and Robert and joined in. Stick around in just a few minutes. We've got Jason Levine coming up with an audio masterclass, which is going to be a lot of fun. Have a great weekend, everyone, and I will see you all next week. for you, honey, you reach for me.